3D printing is quickly becoming the wave of the future and it keeps popping up in the news. It has already been used to make shoes, bikes, and home decor. But 3D printers also make human body parts. And recently, for the first time ever, 3D printing saved a child's life. Thanks to the doctors at the University of Michigan, a toddler named Kaiba is breathing easy. He was six weeks old when we were at a restaurant for dinner one night when he stopped breathing and turned blue on us. He spent 10 days in the hospital then, came home. Two days later, he ended up turning blue again, stopped breathing on us. Quite a few of the doctors said that he had a good chance of not leaving the hospital alive. It was the most devastating thing that a parent could ever hear. Luckily, Dr. Green came up and was able to do something. Tracheomalacia is collapse of the windpipe that makes it so a child is unable to breathe out. Even with the best medical treatments that are available, he continued to have breathing difficulties and continued to have events where he was unable to breathe. We obtained imaging of his defect with a CT scan. Scott Hollister instantly and rapidly went about designing a splint that could go and meet this need. This is the first time this procedure has been done anywhere in the world. This is a model of Kaiba's trachea and bronchi. The splint is designed to slip over the top of the bronchus just like this. As soon as the splint was put in, the lung started going up and down for the first time. We knew that he would be okay. It's called tracheomalacia, and basically it's the windpipe down deep in the chest. It, uh, if you think, you, you ever seen on your vacuum that the hose, it's got those ribs on it? Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps it from collapsing when you turn on the vacuum. You have the same thing in your trachea. When you breathe in, if you didn't have those cartilages, ribs that hold it open, it just collapses. And that's what was happening with Kaiba. He essentially just would go through episodes of not being able to breathe, and it was life-threatening. Before this 3D technology, you would, you know, an ear, nose, throat, surgeon would have to go in there and just kind of figure out the anatomy on the fly and figure out how Guessing to Guessing the size of that tra tracheobronchial tree, not knowing for sure, not knowing exactly how that sleeve was going to fit, et cetera, so. So being able to reproduce the, this child's anatomy outside of his body be, with this technology, they were able to, to make models of his, his uh, trachea and then they were able to design this splint to be the perfect size wow. and the perfect shape and the perfect strength. This is actually a biopolymer. In about two to three years, it's going to dissolve ah. and be gone. And by then, his trachea would have grown. By then, he will have been grown. phenomenal. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Enough. And, uh, you know, I just got word that Kaiba, uh, his mother heard him cry for the first time oh. ever. And so he's growing finally, and he's doing really, really He's well. such a cutie. Oh.